Hey there, I'm the 2K MC, and I want to tell you about everything going on in the city. On Fridays, head to Club 2K to party, play, and listen to the latest tracks. Wondering what to wear for your Valentine's Day date? Throw on your Puma gear and enter Puma Mania, where you can earn up the quadruple rep. On Tuesday and Thursday, put your money where your mouth is and head to Annie Up. And on Wednesday, wear a featured Wacky Wednesday item to earn double rep. Next weekend, check out Mobile One Grand Prix. Start your engines and finish the race, and you can walk away with exclusive Mobile One items, VC, and more. So to recap, here's our big board of upcoming events in the city. That's it for me. I'll see you on the courts. Hey, this is Brian Anderson. And I'm Grant Hill. And you're watching NBA 2K TV. That's right, this is 2K TV, and we'd like to welcome Brian Anderson and Grant Hill to the NBA 2K family. Yes, their voices call some of the most memorable plays in the NBA, and now they could even be calling some of your plays in NBA 2K21. We caught up with Brian Anderson over the summer while he was recording for 2K. Take a look. Welcome to a special edition of Sunday Night Basketball here on 2K Sports. Joined by Grant Hill, Steve Smith, and Allie LaForce, I'm Brian Anderson. Welcome to 2K TV and welcome to the 2K family. Brian Anderson, we're so happy to have you on the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tell us about your recording session today. Oh man, uh, I'm so happy to be a part of this great group. We've, uh, we've done a lot of recording. Um, today was especially fun because uh, we were able to get into a lot of the, like, some of the new names in the NBA and kind of wrap up what happened in the bubble. That was an incredible night of hoops. A tremendous finish. They waited until the very last moment to seal it. What was your favorite moment for today? Well, you know, anytime you can raise your voice, it's a fun <laughs> moment. So uh, I like when we're able to just kind of like, you know, imagine those big dunk. Here's James. Oh! oh! Some of those great moments and so you know there was a lot of those today where we were calling out amazing scoring performances i think i think we went as high as like 91 points so if wow. somebody ever has a 91 point game uh, in the 2k game then it'll be called 91 points <laughs> here's mitchell the blazers making their last shot takes it inside oh, that is what i'm talking about oh, wow. You also recorded with Chris Webber, Smitty, Grant Hill, Doris Burke. <laughs> what was it like to mimic real life broadcasting in 2K with so many of your colleagues? It felt really natural, Alexis. It just it felt like what we've always done. I've never worked with Doris Burke, but all the others to pair up uh, in the virtual war world. And being my first year, it was a really fun experience all the way around. For the win! Ah! It's good! In NBA 2K My Team mode, we have spotlight challenges where you recreate a moment from an NBA player's career. So Damian Lillard chose that incredible moment from that 2019 Western Conference playoff game. And guess who was on the call? You were. Can you recreate that moment and tell us what was going through your head? You know, what was going through my head as a play-by-play -play announcer, you're always worried about sidelines. So so what was going through my head was he was literally five feet from me because of my position at the table, and I was sitting with Kevin McHale for that. Paul George was right with him. And uh, let's see, he, I remember that he was dribbling a lot. I feel like there were like 14 seconds on the clock when he took over the possession. He was not about to pass it. <laughs> I remember when it was over, I said, Damian Lillard! Are you kidding me? And then I just stopped talking for a while. Stopped talking for a while. When you said, are you kidding me? That brought me back to all of the promos that they play on TV, because I think I've heard <laughs> that a thousand times. <laughs> and that's the way I felt in the moment. Like, seriously? A 37 foot game winning, series ending shot over Paul George, one of the great defenders in the NBA, 
and Damian Lillard, who's giving up five inches, six inches to Paul George, uh, hits this incredible basket. And uh, what what a what a what an amazing moment that was. And his family was right next to me. Everybody just came pouring out. The team, the players, the families, those in the front row, and, and it was all happening right in front of me. It was quite quite a scene there in Portland. So let's say you are going to call a game. How do you prepare for that? You know, it's all, all sports are different, but they're all the same in that the way you prepare for a game is perpetual. So you constantly are preparing for a game. You're constantly thinking about what you could use in a game. You're reading constantly. And... And I enjoy that part, and I think you really need to enjoy that to be good at this job. You have to learn and want to learn the backstories of players. You know, we're we're storytellers at the end of the day. You know, for Murray, this is a guy who loves the gym. He's still very young. He's got plenty of runway, Grant. Plenty of runway indeed, VA. From the other side of the screen as a viewer, we want you to know the scene better, the players, the game, the stories, the teams all of that so that's our job you know talking about Gobert's offense the Jazz will actually run plays through him right now you know Brian they are starting to trust him more you've had such a long career so I know this is going to be a hard question but do you have a favorite <laughs> moment of your career uh, when I was a minor league baseball announcer calling my brother's game he pitched for the team I was working for that was a really special moment for me and my family to be a witness to those championships with the San Antonio Spurs. I was with that team as as a broadcaster. To see four of the first five championships come to that city was really special. So Steph Curry and all the stuff he's done. He's Steph Curry scored 17 points in an overtime period. Yes, Whoa. he did! Damian Lillard is right up there as well. And then uh, just recently in the bubble, Anthony Davis hitting a buzzer beater in the Western Conference Finals. We have a little 2K question for you. So we have a 2K TV challenge where you go 3v3 okay. three three in the game with our cover athletes, Kobe Bryant, Damian Lillard, and Zion Williamson. Which players would you choose to beat those guys? LeBron is definitely one of them. The Greek freak is his nickname, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'm gonna go with him also. Do you need a wing on that? And I'm gonna go with Steph Curry. I think that's a good team. I feel like that's a total sellout pick on my part, all three of those guys. That's, a, you know, that's about as as solid as you can be. Thank you so much again for joining us on 2K TV. It was lovely to have you. Can't wait to have you back. Yes. And good luck. It's been a pleasure in my first year with all of you at 2K Sports. It's been a pleasure to be a part of it. So thanks, Alexis. Thank good to you. See you. It's Pam. The Orlando Magic's Mo Bamba has been using his voice to speak up for issues that he believes in. And over the next few weeks, he's bringing you a very special, exclusive three-part series focusing on social justice issues. Here's part one of Respect Your OGs with Mo Bamba. One of the most influential people in my life was my principal in elementary school. In Harlem, it's tough by all means. Um, as soon as you leave school at three o'clock, life hits you. She was the first to really have us believe in ourselves. We repeated a motto every morning that basically what we said was that we were greatness. And for the first time in my life, I was told that I was great. And I wanted all of my actions to be reflected and called great. Doc Rivers gave a couple of speeches that were directly impactful to me. Following the police shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin, he went on to talk about how much, you know, African Americans love this country, yet it always seems like the country doesn't love us back. It's amazing why we keep loving this country and this country does not love us back. What hit me most was the conviction in his voice. You don't need to be black to be outraged. You don't. You need to be American and outraged. It's just really sad. We got to do better. Like many great leaders, when he spoke, we listened and we followed. And this was just a stepping stone to pushing things out the door and, and creating sustainable change. I'm very interested in education reform because it directly involves our youth. I'm a firm believer in the saying that K-12 
kids are the future. And I would love to create sustainable change so that after school programs are not only helping with homework, but they're allowing kids to find their own interest. And just like me, these kids are picking up activities and hobbies that could ultimately lead to life-changing scholarship opportunities. It's important that everyone understand that no matter how big or small you are, you have a platform. And how you utilize that platform is, is on you. And I just want to go and show the generation that's behind me that I'm paying homage to those who came before me and I'm using it the right way. Education reform is foundational for our society to evolve. But players before me had many injustices to overcome in order to have the basic civil rights. Players like Elgin Baylor. Next week, we continue this Respect Your OG series with the Elgin Baylor story told by Mo Bamba. Make sure you check back. The qualifiers are set. We have 32 contenders battling it out for the $250,000 My Team Unlimited tournament coming up February 20th. Nervousness, all of that that some people might feel, I can't feel that anymore because I've already played the best of the best. Only two will move on to the finals to compete for the grand prize and the title. Now this is a different set, this is 1v1. If I lose, I only have to blame myself. You just gotta just try to stay um, cool, calm, and collected. No doubt, everybody out there gotta be on the lookout and try to defend my crown for sure. Will we have a repeat champion? Will a rookie take it all? The stage is set. It's really a humble experience to, to see that you're up there with people that, I don't know, three weeks ago, a month ago from here, I was watching on my computer or, or you know, streaming and stuff. It's really, it's really awesome. I'm very confident. Um, I'm very comfortable. I think that when the pressure's on, I will rise. We have an exciting My Team Unlimited tournament ahead of us. And today I'm joined by My Team correspondent, Brian, and YouTube My Team extraordinaire, Kilzamoy. How you doing, gentlemen? Very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Doing great. Always a good time talking about the $250,000 My Team Unlimited Tournament. That's right, lives are about to change. So Killsmore, you've been breaking down things all over YouTube when it comes to My Team. You can educate so many people on this mode. How are you liking My Team this year? What are some of your favorite things about it? I definitely think one of my favorite things is the XP rewards. The fact that we now have a level up system reaching level 40 allows for some of the best cards in the game, and especially talking about season one, which you would expect that card to maybe be outdated. Steph Curry is still in my lineup and still is one of the best cards in the game. Now with season four, and Galaxy Open Kawhi Leonard being the level 40 reward, I feel like that is a card as well that just everyone needs to grind for and everyone's trying for because it's one of the best cards in the game. And also, if you've no money spent, there is actually a, a chance for you to be able to get that card through grinding. I think that's one of my favorite things. Also, the amount of content that 2K has been dropping and allowing us to be able to get out of packs to be able to get for free. For example, that Baron Davis Galaxy Opal free card that came out around Christmas was just an awesome addition. And I feel like 2K is doing a really good job this year so far. It'll be really interesting to see how those rewards play a factor in the tournament. How excited are you for this tournament? The crop of talent in this tournament this year is going to be a lot of fun. We have 2K League pros, we have YouTubers, and the blend of talent is really going to be something to watch this year. The really cool thing is Paponix, the first chance that he had to qualify, newly turned 18, he qualifies and in the first seed. So Killzimo, I have to ask you, how crazy is it that somebody who just was able to qualify made the first seed against all the pros and great players returning? Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like definitely um, the younger people are getting, you know, even better and better. And especially because I would say that I remember back when I was in that little age, we didn't really have many like tournaments like this for 2K, but I'm glad that it's come around for us to be able to actually give those experiences and give those life-changing moments to people that you know, just turned 18. So congratulations to him and it's a crazy achievement. And Brian, not only is this tournament seeing fierce competitors across the United States, but like I mentioned, the first seed is in Spain. And we also have a second competitor that actually qualified in Spain. How important is it to 2K that this is now going global? 
I think it's really important, Chris. And look, we've seen this in the NBA with so much international flavor coming into the league recently with Luka, Porzingis, and guys like that. So to see it happen in the NBA and then to see more international talent come in through NBA 2K is something really cool that I think the league and the game can continue to build on. Now, another intense competitor that is in this tournament, a fan favorite, Ty Debo. He is a winner of the Global Championship, and he actually talked about winning that championship and what that experience did for him. Kilzamoy, how important is it to have experience on your side in this tournament? Well, yeah, that's one thing that I was thinking about is I think a lot of people that do play the 250K tournament will probably have a lot of pressure on them, especially if they make it to those final rounds and especially the final final. I think that's something that people that do have experience will definitely take advantage of because it means that they've been in those pressure situations to be able to hopefully, you know, understand the way that the game is going to be played and hopefully just play their normal game because I can understand that I probably get a bit shaky. So that's because I have no experience. So I see that they will probably have experience and that might give them an advantage. What kind of focus does Ty Debo need to come in with to compete again in a 1v1 level? Yeah, he's going to have to be locked in. And actually, Jomar, who took home the championship last year uh, in the My Team tournament, he had talked about how it's a much different game and a different feel. So I think that's one thing when we talk about Ty Debo is how he's going to be able to translate that uh, coming into the tournament. And you mentioned Jomar. He just qualified in the last round. He's in the tournament. The experience is there. He's won it before. He's hungry to win it again. How do you think that favors him in this tournament this year? I think it's going to favor him pretty well, Chris, because actually after last tournament, when Jomar won it all, he ended up getting drafted into the NBA 2K League. So Jomar's stock just seems to be rising higher and higher. I did watch that final, and I was very impressed with especially his defense and the way that he was just so composed, even when he won it, like, it didn't really seem like he won the whole tournament because he was just very chill about it all. Speaking of pro players, we have one that has shot the most three-point attempts in the NBA 2K League, Splash. Shoot a lot of threes, live and die by the three. Anybody who knows me on both consoles, 2K League, if anything, I want to take the three. Sometimes that's why I lose, because my strategy is three, three, three. I forget to take the easy ones. How do you think his high octane offense will factor into this tournament? Yeah, we know what the MO with Splash is. He likes to take a lot of threes and he's usually making a lot of threes. A couple cards that I expect to see from Splash, the pink diamond Steph Curry, he talked about on 2K TV how it was his favorite card and he has just been raining it in from downtown with him. And then Galaxy Opal John Havlicek, that card is a shooter and I've been seeing Splash hit a lot of tough threes with that card. Killsmoy, I don't think my team fans like to shoot a lot of threes, do they? Oh, trust me, they do, yeah. I, I love shooting threes, and I feel like the big reason that I love shooting threes is because I love to win, and the thing you gotta remember is three points is better than two points. That's one thing that I always have in my mind is I always try and go for threes first. Yeah, it's a, it's a big way of obviously winning the game, and I think that's gonna play a huge factor in Splash's game, so yeah. We'll be back to the My Team Roundtable in a moment after we take a look at this week's top plays. Time for some February fire! I'm the 2K MC, and it's time to check out your top plays of the week. Our first play is from the finesse god in the wreck. Life has lots of what ifs. What if you pick the ball handler at half court? What if you trip over your own feet? What if the help D is late? Avoid these regrets. Follow your dreams through all of life's and wants. Next up is from my team and Zeta Punisher. What do you get when you cross Jordan's speed with Kemp intensity? Dunk dunk! That's what you get. These two never played together, but in my team, any combination is possible. Toasty! Back at the wreck with Mel Smasha. Final possession. Keeps the defender confused with a myriad of dribbles and greens the buzzer beater from inside the arc. Ten dribbles in six seconds. Unpredictable handles. Get wrecked, scrub. Ha ha ha! 
Ending this one with Alex Power 5. Attention passengers, Barrett Davis is now cleared for takeoff. You never know who might soar over you in NBA 2K21 or who's left standing underneath. It may even be the GOAT. Vote now for your top play of the week and submit your top plays to social media using the hashtag 2KTVWOW. I'm the 2K MC, and I gotta go because I'm taking your date out for Valentine's Day. That's it for the top plays this week. Now back to the Knights of the My Team Roundtable. I use, obviously, a point guard, Stephen Curry. At the two, I was running with Randy Hill, Pink Diamond. At the small forward position, Jan Robinson, Diamond. At the power forward, I was running with Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Diamond Guard. And at center, I was using Blake Griffin, Pink Diamond. All right, so the one thing everybody wants to know about, with seasons in this year's My Team and all these rewards, there is a plethora of lineups that we could potentially see in this tournament. So I have to go to you first, Brian. What cards do you foresee doing the most damage in this tournament? Well, one card I immediately think of is the season one level 40 reward, Pink Diamond, Steph Curry. He can knock down threes from anywhere, and I think that's gonna be huge in regards to spacing. So I would expect to see Pink Diamond Steph Curry in a lot of lineups come tournament day. Yeah, it seems to be a competitor's favorite in this tournament. How about you, Kilsmoy? What cards do you expect to see in this tournament? Well, look, as Brian said, one of my favorite cards in the game is definitely Steph Curry. So I love that card, but I also think a lot of players will see defense as something to be a big advantage because players like Michael Jordan, who just came out, who is absolutely crazy on defense, he gets me so many steals without me even really trying. And players like Hakeem Olajuwon, Anthony Davis, those players, they might not score as many points as maybe Steph Curry, Gallus, Yoko, Dame but they might just end up winning you the game. You guys are talking about the Pink Diamonds, you guys are talking about the Galaxy Opals, the big names, but what are some of the sleeper cards that we could potentially see in this tournament? Speaking of, obviously, Galaxy Opals, I think the most underrated Galaxy Opal is John Havlicek, but I also think as for like Amethyst and stuff like that, Michael Porter Jr. is an insane addition. Also, the new Brian Scalabrini that came out with Hall of Fame range, Hall of Fame deep freeze. There's so many budget cards like Jonathan Isaac, players that have just really good on defense, also have a good release and might also have those badges. They really do help players out that even if you are in a budget, like you can see these players using them in the tournament, so they're definitely good enough to rock in that. How about you, Brian? What sleeper cards do you have in your mind? Well, one card comes to mind, and that's from Flash 3 Packs, Glitch Diamond Zion Williamson. He's got a 93 three-point rating. He's got seven Hall of Fame badges, and four of them come in the shooting department. He can help you on the fast break. He can help you on the pick and roll, both as a roll man and then also in the pick and pop game to knock down some three-pointers and space the floor. So keep an eye out for Glitched Diamond Zion as a card to really make some noise in the tournament. I love it, great answers, guys. The whole world's gonna be very interested in seeing what some of these competitors use in terms of their lineups. But Killsmoy, I have to ask you, what lineup would you throw out there as your starting five with my team cards if you were competing in this tournament? Uh, well, my point guard is my favorite card in the game at the moment, and that is Galaxy Opal Damian Lillard just because he has Hall of Fame range and also is able to dunk the ball. Then at the two, I'm definitely having Michael Jordan. He is just crazy on defense and has such a good release. The three, you gotta go with LeBron. I love the card so much, and especially with what, like 28 Hall of Fame badges he comes with, crazy. And then one of the most underrated Galaxy Opals, in my opinion, would be at my power forward position, and that is Chris Webber, because he's just an athletic beast. And then at center, Pretty sure I'd have to rock with Hakeem Olajuwon just because he can do absolutely everything and feels so fast on the court. Brian, I have to ask you, what would your hypothetical starting lineup be if you were in the tournament? Let's start with point guard. I'm gonna go with my guy, Steph Curry, just so I can know that I can splash threes at any given moment and help space the floor. As shooting guard, I'm gonna go with Galaxy Opal, Tracy McGrady. This guy can do it all. 
And then at small forward, Galaxy Opal, LeBron James. That card is the ultimate all-around player. At power forward, I'm gonna go to the Idol Series 2 packs and pull Galaxy Opal, Anthony Davis. And then at center, come on, we gotta go with the dream. Hakeem Olajuwon, he won back-to-back -back titles with the Rockets, and I think he would help me win at least one championship. So that would be my starting five. So there it is, this special My Team Roundtable. Thanks so much to Brian, our My Team correspondent, right here on 2K TV, bringing you all the news. And of course, Killzamoy, breaking down all things My Team on his YouTube channel. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Chris. Remember, you can watch all the tournament action right here in-game via 2K Streamcast on February 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. You won't want to miss it. For those of you following us on social media, you may have noticed that you all vote and we're posting your top play winners right there. So if you want to know who wins the vote this week, you better follow us to find out. We're at NBA 2K underscore 2K TV. We'll see you all there. And we'll see you back here next week. Bye. Hey there, I'm the 2K MC, and I want to tell you about everything going on in the neighborhood. This weekend, rush home from your Valentine's Day date for some two-on-two -two action. Win four games in a row, and you can walk away with exclusive rush apparel, VC, and more. On Wednesday, head to the cages, because all day long, you can bounce your way to double rep. And for more weekend action, be sure to check out Gold Rush. In this leaderboard event, all VC one and any up will be used as your score. Next weekend, you'll have four chances to compete with some sweet prizes to earn. So I better see you out there. So to recap, here's our big board of upcoming events in the neighborhood. That's it for me. I'll see you on the courts.